Psalms chapter 25 A Psalm of David Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Soul is that eternal part of you. Listen, these bodies that we're in today, they're not going to last for eternity. The Bible speaks about those in hell and lake of fire will get another body. For those that are saved will get a body like to Christ. And we don't even know what, what the Old Testament people are going to get a body like. So what David's saying here, I lift up my soul. David's saying, I'm lifting up the eternalness of me. What not I am. Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. The oh my God and mention the enemies at, at the end of this verse is, is a, a thing of trouble. There's a problem. I trust in thee with the enemies. Uh, God, look into you. Let me not be ashamed of what? Of the enemies winning. God, you're the God of all gods. You'd be ashamed for small G-O-D-S to win over you. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. We got a whole nation here, God, that, that's looking to you. We want you. We want the victory. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Let the wicked doers be ashamed. Let them lose. Let them not get the victory. Show me thy ways, O Lord, and teach me thy path. That ought to be for every Christian. That's a perfect Old Testament, New Testament fact that you can find in the Bible that is a good prayer. You can pray because Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. If you were to sincerely start your day with, with that kind of prayer, say, Lord, show me your way for today and teach me the path where I'm to go today. Even, you know, if I've got something planned, and for whatever reason, i got to run down to the store because I don't have this, maybe because you want me to give somebody a gospel track. Whatever reason that, you know, I hit that red light, it's for a reason. Maybe you're protecting me. For whatever reason that something has happened in my life today that I did not plan it. It's something for you, Lord, because the Lord allows it. But we get, upset, we get upset, we get uptight, we get impatient, we complain and gripe and everything else, and we don't see God's blessing in it. And I'm just as guilty. I'm preaching to myself. Lead me in thy truth. Lead. Let God go before you. You don't go ahead of God. You don't say, God, come on, come over here. No, you got to follow the Lord. You know, they say, well, you're to walk hand in hand with the Lord. Well, how are you going to see the Lord if, if you're walking, if he's walking right beside you? He's got to walk a little bit ahead of you. Now, I said before in verse 4, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Well, look at that. The way in verse 4 and truth in verse 5. And teach me. And Jesus says of the Holy Spirit that are to come into our lives today, he will teach you all things. For thou art the God of my salvation. There's life. There's the way, the truth, and the life. Right there. Oh, oh, excuse me. On thee do I wait all the day. What else are you going to do? You say, what do you mean? Well, there's three positions you can be in your Christian life. You can wait on God and wait for him to do what you want to do when you want to do it. Or you can just not move at all. Or you can jump ahead of God. Three possibilities, like three answers to prayer. There are three positions in the Christian life. You don't move at all. You walk with God and wait for him to do. Or you just go ahead on with yourself. Listen, you want a perfect book to read besides the Bible on what's going on here. You read Pilgrim's Progress. As Christian walks that walk of life, and he makes steps and paths that he ran on before the Lord and got into trouble. 
He he hesitated. He fell asleep one time and lost his scroll and had to go back and get it and killed a lot of time. Had he done what the Lord wanted to do and walk like the Lord wanted to do, he would have come to the, I forget which house it was, and then he would have slept there instead of in the arbor. I believe every Christian should, should read along with their Bible yearly Pilgrim's Progress. I think every Christian should read Fox's Book of Martyrs and No Church History. Remember, O oh Lord. Now, that doesn't mean that God has a forgetful nature, but we do. Thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. You know, you read about in the Bible, uh, Aaron's sons there, Nahab and Abihu, God torched them for doing wrong. Well, God warned them. He said, listen, this is how it's to be done, and they didn't do it. He was merciful to Adam and Eve. You know that? He could have torched them. He told Adam, do not eat that fruit. But he didn't say, Adam, you know, the day thereof, you're going to die physically. And a lot of people say, well, contradiction about it. No, spiritually, Adam died. Of God's long suffering mercy, he allowed Adam and Eve to live. Under sin, man's choice. And since that time in Genesis chapter 3, until the Lord calls us all home, until uh, the great white throne judgment, those whose names are in the book and get to go to heaven, that's the, that's the loving kindness, that's the mercies of ever of old. That God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That God so loved uh, Noah and his family that they did right. He says, listen, build you a boat. Everybody else has got to go. And yet he loved the people of old and said, listen, Noah's like, can I shut the door? No, you, I'll shut the door. God gave them opportunity, the world to go in that boat or the ark with Noah Listen, he didn't shut the, the, the door until it started raining. That's loving kindness. He didn't shut the door. He didn't fry them at Babel. He just changed their language and moved them all over the world. And people make God out as this mean, nasty tyrant. That's Satan. And then God is holy and you got to pay for sins. Remember not the sins of my youth. Well, isn't it great that for a born-again Christian, once you get saved, at that point in your life and everything back to when you were born are all under the blood. So when Satan comes to you, what about those sins you did at seven years old? Listen, if you were saved when I, when I was at 18 years old, from 18 all the way down to when I was born, it's under the blood. And I got to tell Satan, say, listen, it's under the blood. God don't remember it, neither should I. Now, if there are times after you were saved and you committed sins and Satan brings those sins up and maybe you forgot, remember, not. Well, if Satan brings them back to the memory. If you're not sure they're under the blood, say, Lord, listen, you may not know what I'm talking about, but if you do, then there's trouble and I need to put it under the blood. Now, I've had that happen in my life. Many times sins will come up and be like, well, wait a minute, is that under the blood? Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. Transgression is when you step more than what you're supposed to step. When God set a limit and you went over the limit. Listen, Adam and me could have walked through that tree, walked around that tree, climbed that tree. They could have made... Uh, Chairs out of that tree. The transgression was when they took the fruit. But that still wasn't the sin. They could have played baseball with that fruit. The sin was when they put it in their mouth. That fruit transgressed by going into the mouth. According to thy mercy, God's mercy, and that's what you should plead to all the time because Satan don't have mercy. Man may not have mercy. 
History speaks of man and his unmercifulness. Imagine a country doing nuclear tests in their own country and giving people cancer and death because of it and hiding it for years and years and years. Oh, and then just by chance, probably when all those people have died out and all that, then they bring it the truth. Well, that's not mercy. How about a nation that teaches their pilots to get in airplanes and crash their airplanes purposely killing themselves into the enemy ship? Well, that's not mercy. Where if you cry upon God as a sinner, you know what? God may say, you know what? I see your heart and you really mean to do well. I'll take care of you. Remember thou me for thy goodness sake, not your goodness, my goodness. That, that is a terrible word to say. For there is none good, no, none that doeth right, none seek after God. God is the only good one. And the Jehovah Witnesses have the problem where Jesus tells that guy, he says, you know, don't call me good. There's only good. There's one God and the Father. Well, what's the problem with that? Why did Jesus say he wasn't God? Yeah, but Jesus said the only good one was the Father. How about that? How many Jehovah Witnesses say, you know, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'm doing good. No, only God's doing good. Oh, Lord. Good and upright is the Lord again. Good. Upright. No man is upright. Therefore, will he, God, teach sinners... In the way. The public school systems today in America are not teaching in the way of God. They're teaching the way of sin. Sinners teaching sinners. How to do more sins. What do you think that's going to be a product of in the next five to ten years of the Lord Terry? They're making all kinds of nonsense about Christmas in the schools. If they taught the truth about Christmas and if Christians will get the truth about Christmas, you know it's no big deal. Some woman taught something about, oh, we weren't supposed to have that book here. We don't allow religion in the school. What about yoga? If you're not teaching yoga is a religion, then you're teaching false. Because it is a religion. How about praying on mats? Oh, they're not praying, they're chanting. Uh, yeah, you know, that's a religion. Evolution is a religion. It takes faith. The meek will he guide God in judgment. Oh, so you mean the meek will still be judged? Yes, all will be judged. And God will guide them in judgment. He, in their life, he'll teach the meek, those who want to do right. Beware of this. Listen, God's using me to speak to people saying, listen, beware of this. You're going to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. Beware. Listen to that idiot. And they don't want to listen. Those who do listen... And those who do listen to the preachers that do right, and the, and the prophets today that do right, and the evangelists that do right, those who want to love the Lord and do right that will listen, God will speak to men like me and say, hey, don't do this. And they'll get right. And they'll do what God wants you to do. And they'll show up at the judgment seat of Christ. And they'll have some smoke. Everyone will. But there are some out there, well, I mean, it's going to be a forest fire. And it's a shame because they will not listen to what God says to them. And the meek will he, God, teach his way. Well, you know what's going on today? They're teaching a the way that's not God. They're teaching a the way of the heathen. They're teaching a the way of paganism. They're teaching a the way of religion. They're teaching a the way of what I feel. They're teaching a the way of I like it. you got churches all around here. The pastor's doing something because he likes it. Not because what the Bible says is right or wrong, because he likes it, enjoys it. Well, you know, you know what that pastor's going to find out across America and all the way around the world? That the judgment seat of Christ, I don't care if you like this, what God said. And you're going to have to be held account to your wife and your children, if you got them. And then you're going to have to be held account to your congregation. 
And then if somebody in like your congregation gets called to preach and starts a church and takes on what you taught him, you're going to have to be held accountable to that guy's congregation too. It's the judgment of God. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. God cannot and will not lie to you. And God will show you mercy. God gets the, the, the paddle for your rear end when you don't do the paths that God told you to do. You know, a choo-choo train does great going down the tracks. There are no problems at all. It may be late. It may be uh, fast. It may, you know. But the problem arises when that train jumps the tracks. That's when it starts hurting. When that train jumps off the track, that's when people get injured. That's when property damage happens. That's when death could result. That's when there's no more mercy. And truth. Unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. And you'll find that in the law. They had to do what God told them to do. There's no ifs, ands, or buts, and no loopholes. You know why they don't want the Ten Commandments in the courtrooms in America today? Because how can you find a loophole in thou shalt not? Where's the loophole? Thou shalt not commit adultery. How... What, what basis can you go around that? The only way you could do that is you change the definition of adultery. And still, adultery is adultery. Thou shalt not steal. How do you get somebody? How do you stand in a courtroom for a guy who was caught on camera with witnesses who robbed the store, stands in a courtroom, and you get a lawyer that defends him? That he's outright caught in the act and sometimes these idiots on TV say yeah I did it and you get this guy who's defending that oh no he didn't do it the law is a law black and white in the Old Testament you had to do it only David was let loose from it you know even Solomon was not let loose. God told Solomon, don't go to Egypt, don't marry all these wives, and don't become rich. Solomon didn't do it. Well, his whole life was messed up. For thy name's sake, a name that's above all names, O Lord. Okay, for thy name's sake. Buddha? No. Buddha's not the Lord. L-O-R-D. All capitals. That's Jehovah. Yahweh. Jesus Christ. Sorry, he's not, it's not, uh, um, I can't think of the Islam guy there. Uh, Muhammad. Muhammad's not capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. How do I know that my God's not the right God? Because it doesn't say capital M-A-R-Y. It says the Lord Jehovah. Pardon my iniquity. You know, the, the religions out there is, they can't pardon iniquity. Well, if I do this in the name of this God, I will get, no. Tell me beyond a shadow of doubt that you'll get that for doing what you did. Ask any Roman Catholic, do you know 100% if you do everything your church did, if you were to be 100% in your church, that you know you'll have eternal life in heaven? And they say, yes, they are a liar. Because why would they need purgatory? By the way, which purgatory is gone. I don't know where it would go. Maybe went on a cruise or something. I don't know. Only Jesus Christ can pardon your iniquity. The Old Testament couldn't pardon iniquity. They went to Abraham's bosom when they died. For it is great. What is great? God's name or the iniquity? 
Is that, is that a wonderful question there? It can be both. God is great, and guess what? Our iniquities are great. So you know what the two great things in your life are? It's God and your sins. And it took a great God to wash away all your great sins. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Not many today. Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. Him, the man that fears the Lord, he, God, will teach in the way that he shall choose. Now, I don't know if that last he is God or the man. If it's man, God still gives him the free choice, the free will. And that man fears the Lord, God will teach him, and he still has the way to choose. God is not going to force you to do what God wants you to do. God will give you a free will all the way. God gives you a free will of salvation. God will give you a free will to be baptized like the preacher talked about the other night. God will give you a free will to pass out tracts or witness to anybody. God will give you a free will about your sins. Do you want to continue or do you want to forsake them? Do you want to fight them? You may still do it, but do you, want, do you fight it? Or do you just want to continue to love it? You will have a free will until you die. Never will God give you, you must do this. Like, and I'm doing these messages about Christmas. Hey, I'm just giving it to you. You do what you want to do. But I'm telling you what's right. His soul shall dwell at ease. What? How? When you do what God wants you to do. When you obey God, your soul, even in tribulation, problems and all that, you'll be at ease. Paul. Paul was in all kinds of troubles, but he was at ease. And his seed shall inherit the earth. Now that's the Jew. That earth is not us. That's the land of Palestine. That's the land grant that God's given to the Jew, that is not Christian. That is not church age. And you know why it says, you know, it says his soul shall dwell at ease. Well, I say like Paul. But the Bible does say in the law, if you did right, God would bless you. Go back and read Leviticus. Says, As a nation, you do right. Man, you're going to have all kinds of crops. Your children are going to do well. You're going to have all these animals. You're going to have promises after promises. After... That's what the prosperity gospel is. It's Old Testament. There is a prosperity gospel, but not today. And Israel very rarely ever did that. There was a few kings in Judah that actually did right. None in Israel up north. You know why David and, so and Solomon did so great building that temple? Because they loved the Lord and did right. They had gold and silver coming in left and right. But when they did wrong, they were scraping the gold off the doors of the temple. Don't you read? You know, as a born-again Christian, you may do right and do what God wants you to do. And the Bible says, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But you can have the peace, one of the fruits of the Spirit. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. What's the secret? Paul revealed seven mysteries that no one ever knew. How about that high priest? You know, he was the only one that went into the most holy place. No one ever went in there. What about you take John the Baptist's father, Zacharias? What's the secret of the Lord for him? He actually got to go in the holy place. He knew what the table looked like. He knew what the bread looked like. He knew what about the candlestick and the, and the uh, incense altar. No one else was allowed in there. What's the secret of the Lord? How about Hannah? She prays for a little boy and said, I'll give, you, I'll give you that child. And the Lord returns her with more children. And 
and he will show them his covenant. Oh, well, he showed the covenant to, a to Abram, Abraham, Noah. So they knew something about the Lord. My eyes are ever toward the Lord. That's David speaking. Well, David, I know one time you didn't. <laughs> I don't know. David had had a problem with women. For he shall pluck my feet out of the net. David got entangled a few times. One time looking at Bathsheba. Be interesting to find out when when this this psalm was written. Probably before Bathsheba. But the enemy will be out there to put the net. Satan wants you to trip. Turn thee unto me. Now turn thee, God, unto me, David. Come on, Lord, be on my side. And have mercy upon me, David, for I am desolate and afflicted. I got all kinds of troubles, Lord, and everybody's left me. If that's not the Lord Jesus Christ, what is? And even the Bible records, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? How's that? The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Life is not good. Life is hard. Life is cruel. Imagine telling somebody, Hey, you got a disease, we got the cure. All right, you got a million dollars to pay for it? No. Well, can't give it to you, sorry. Oh, bring thou me out of my distresses. <laughs> you know, I pray to the Lord, Lord, I got tooth pain. Help. Lord's taking care of us financially, but Lord, I see down the road. Help. <laughs> Lord, I got the pills, but help. <laughs> and according to the book of Psalms, 25 chapters so far, there's nothing wrong with praying that. Show me where God said, don't do that. God wants you to talk to him. God wants you to be honest with him. When you pray to God, if you're angry with God, tell him. Say, God, I'm angry with you. I told God the other night, I... I and not to be funny, to be true. God, why did you make my thumb not be able to reach that scratch back there? You knew where we were going to have an itch right there in the middle of our back, and you didn't give my thumb long enough to itch it. Was that of Satan? God, I, you know, when we were going through troubles with, with the church and all, God, why is this happening? Why? What am I to learn? Why? Why is my family being subject to this mess? I don't like it. I got distresses, and God wants you to tell him. He already knows what's in your heart. He wants you to hear. He wants you to tell him. He wants to hear it out of your lips. Look upon my affliction and my pain. There you go. And forgive me my all my sin. There's no order of praying. When you when you're asking God, when you listen, praise God, ask for God, Lord, I need cleansing from my sins, Lord, I've transgressed. There's no order the way it is. Listen, that, that day you get you pray to the Lord, you're you're your body may be in so much pain and it's more than, than asking God to forgive you for your sin. Or maybe that you've got so much sin you're more than, than the family. But the most important thing is do you talk to God in everything? You ever think about asking God to, to bless the meal after you ate it if it wasn't a good meal? 
you know, we bow our heads before the meal and say, God bless this meal, and we, we eat certain meals, or maybe we go out and something, or it was dry or where, or it just didn't. And so, can you thank the Lord afterwards? There are people out there who actually pray after the meal. Is that wrong? No. Which is better? <laughs> None. They're both glorifying God. Consider my enemies. Lord, I got people against me. Pray about them. People are attacking me. Pray for them. The New Testament says pray for them. The Old Testament, Lord, kill them. That's the difference. See, we're under mercy. They're under the law. For they are many. And they hate me with a cruel hatred. I would think that he's writing about Saul. I don't know anybody really. I don't even know if Absalom really hated David that much. I think Absalom was in love with the, the authority. If there's anybody I really read that, that was really bitter and angry against David purposely, not even uh, Goliath, I would think it was Saul. Oh, keep my soul. Now, an Old Testament Jew must pray that. Because they're not eternally secure. Saul had it. Before he became king, he had the, he had it. But end of his life, he, he lost it. Samson had it. Lost it. Had it. Lost it. Had it. Lost it. Had it. Lost it. Had it lost it. And according to Hebrews 11, he had it when he died. What about Jonathan? You want to, you want a discussion? To, is Jonathan in heaven today? He loved David. He did right, but he followed his father. Will you see Jonathan? I don't know. According to the Old Testament law, I don't know. Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. From what? From hell. From death of the enemies. Let me not be ashamed. Lo loss of battle. Being turned over to the enemies. You know, Saul said that when he came to his death, he tells his armor bearer, he says, listen, kill me because so these guys don't come over here. And listen, those, those soldiers would have done vile and brutal things. Look at Samson's life. In the end, I'll tell you what happened to Samson. Probably he probably stood up there naked, and things were going on that I can't mention. But that would have happened to Saul. Here's the king of Israel. Let's do all we can to. He's still living. Let's make him suffer and not be ashamed. Listen, Jesus Christ died on the cross naked, not a clothes on him, to be ashamed to the whole world. Everything there to be seen by all. For I will put my trust in thee, God. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me. For I wait on thee. So with come with God comes integrity and comes uprightness. And some of the things that's going on in the churches today, there is no integrity and there's no uprightness. So it can't be of God. And they're not waiting on the Lord. They're waiting for that ball team to play. They're waiting for them to get the, 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 the little statue for a, for a lion performance. They're waiting for Christmas to come to see what's underneath the tree. They're waiting for a wedding day. They're waiting for a, <coughs> for a uh, retirement day. They're waiting for their trip. They're waiting for a graduation. They ain't truly waiting on the Lord. How do you know that? Because they'd be doing out there doing what the Lord told them to do. Oh, I want the rapture to happen. How many people are you going out there telling them about Jesus Christ? Well, none. I'll let my light shine. Redeem Israel. Ah, Israel. Not America. Oh, God. Out of all his troubles. Israel's in trouble. They're always in trouble. 
If there were people that were hated by all people, were the Jews. And they're God's people. And David's prayer, like uh, Saul's prayer, is for the Jew to be redeemed. For God to save them. And God's going to whip them for seven years. And he's going to save them. He's going to bring them into the land. Oh, Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. And when I think that God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died.